partnership closure, how a dissolution plan can greatly help. Breakups are like divorces, tough, costly, and sometimes unpredictable. For business partnerships, things are even tougher. Think of it as traditional divorce with uh, additional complications, most of which are financial. Granted, it may be too late to salvage the personal relationship, but you can save yourself some hassle, stress, and money as you close your business partnership. Find out how to do so with the dissolution plan and why experts believe such a plan remains the best way to end a business relationship. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you are doing marvelous. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. Now, let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about partnership closure, how a dissolution plan can greatly help. Now, remember that the suggestions in this video will apply to a partnership business entity or to an LLC with several members, owners, which is similar. If you are in a small corporation or S corporation with only a few owners, this video might apply to you too. Now, there are a few issues that need to be discussed and decided on when you end a partnership. So you got to have some questions and some questions that you and your partners should discuss and get some agreement on. But the formal legal matters will need to be done with the help of an attorney. Remember, this show is not about giving legal advice. We, we have compiled information and we are giving you the results of our investigation now for your particular matter for your particular situation you want to reach out to an attorney now let's talk about before you decide to close the doors remember dissolution means closing the doors of a business this should be always the last resort before you make any final decision to end the partnership consider these questions number one do you have a partnership agreement so when you started the partnership did you create a written partnership agreement? Did you prepare a, a statement or did you have an attorney, a competent attorney, prepare such a statement or agreement? Remember that agreements, a good agreement, includes specifics about how to end the partnership or how to continue with changes to the status of one or more partners. Having a partnership agreement in place makes changes easier and you may decide it's worth it's worth it to continue who knows because without a without an agreement closing will take longer and be more expensive if there is no partnership agreement the partners will need to be able to work together to find common agreement so if you have a difficult partner for example this could be one of the reasons why you are dissolving the partnership in the first place but you'll have to find a way to get through it right this is kind of like a divorce right sounds like a divorce right you might want to consider mediation in this situation before you resort to costly litigation. Nobody wants to go to court. It is it is it could be lengthy, expensive, and divisive. You also want to ask yourself what is the partnership type? What type of partners is the person leaving? So the type of partnership and the status of the partner who is leaving can make all the difference in what happens to the partnership and if it it, it can survive. Let's say if the partner has a majority controlling share, the partnership may not be able to survive unless the other partners can do a buyout. Right now, let's have uh, let's go through a few other questions, but I'll do so right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Cube. We are still continuing our conversation here around partnership closure, how a dissolution plan can greatly help. If you love the content clarity so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you can be informed in real time when we drop a new show. And we do those, we do this kind of shows every single day, rain or shine. Not necessarily on business law all the time, but we do vary. We are an infotainment show, so we like to vary our topics. Can the partnership continue? So if a partner, if a partner is leaving the business, you might be able to continue by buying out that individual, right? Because that assumes that you want to continue with the other partners. If only one partner remains and wants to continue the business, you can check with an attorney about how to change the legal status of the business. Another thing you want to think about is selling the business. Can the business be sold? Because selling the partnership might be another alternative to closing. 
the partner or partners leaving the business will probably have to be bought out out of their share of the business before the sale. So this is, again, something that you, you can talk about with your attorney to see how things will work for your particular business. What is your ultimate personal goal for yourself and the partnership? You need to think about how you see yourself and the company in a few years. Is it something you're done with? Is it is it you know, are you done with the company? Do you, don't you have the passion anymore? Don't you have some kind of uh, energy anymore to wake up in the morning and be enthusiastic about the company? So you need to check with yourself. You want to you need to consider your personal situation and whether the partnership is what you want after the other person leaves, because sometimes partnerships are created because of what partners. So you kind of have some some initial chemistry, some initial report among the different partners. So when one one or two person lives, you kind of have a break in the family, in the kind of partnership, which is what a partnership is, a family of people of different individuals who share the same traits professionally or socially or you know um, psychologically or physiologically we, we, we've seen partnerships where the partners are really similar in various traits what i'm trying to get here is that if your ultimate personal goal is to hang around the partners and if those partners leave the partnership you got to ask yourself whether or not you're still interested. Now, you can create a dissolution plan. This is something I want to talk about now. Creating a dissolution plan. If you have finally decided to end the partnership, and even if you have a partnership agreement, you will need a plan for the process of dissolution. The Small Business Administration says a dissolution plan should begin with a review of the state of your business. So what do you, what do you have to include in your dissolution plan? You, you got to have a timeline for what will happen when and up through the formal dissolution and the final tax return. Don't forget, you got to pay taxes on this, not on the dissolution, but there has to be some final tax return to prepare. The task that must be performed during the process, you need to also put those in the dissolution plan. Don't forget to include an independent contract and independent valuation of the business. Payments that need to be made and who must make them. This includes attorneys, state and federal taxing agencies, documents that need to be filed, including the final, the final tax return, the state entity documents. You got to also include in a dissolution plan. This is very, very important. Don't forget plans for notification of all stakeholders, including employees, contractors, vendors, and of course, customers. As, as is, is the case with all major business changes, it, it's important to preserve the goodwill of the business, even if it's been dissolved. So you want to add these decisions to your dissolution plan. You want to have a strategy to preserve the goodwill of the company. Ending a business is like ending a marriage, but it can go more smoothly if you decide on the ultimate goal at the beginning of the process and you use a detailed plan to get to your end results. Right. So you got to be methodical here. You can't just do things um, randomly. If you want if you want the whole process to go smoothly, you got to be methodical. I will be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still talking today about partnership closure, how a dissolution plan can greatly help. Now, remember, I was talk I was talking to you earlier about getting a business valuation you want to value the company and this is very critical valuing the business is a critical step so an independent valuation of the business is critical in crafting a dissolution plan this is similar to an appraisal for a home a home sale in which a business appraiser inspects and analyzes the entire business this process usually includes valuation of assets including depreciation and other factors so businesses can be valued in several ways, depending on the circumstances of the valuation, sale or bankruptcy, for example. Let's say a business is being offered for sale. Some more than one valuation method may be presented as part of the business valuation report. And this sometimes is also part of something called due diligence report. So the potential acquirers, the potential buyers might commission their own independent 
appraisal of the company. So sections of a business valuation report, including an economic analysis, industry analysis, and discussion of valuation methods used. Now, why do you need an up-to-date business valuation? Things happen in business as in life, right? So just as you should always have a resume ready and you should keep your business plan updated, you should prepare a business valuation and update every year. You want to update that business plan, that business valuation rather, every year. Something could happen to you like death or being disabled. So you might be able to take advantage of an opportunity like an unexpected opportunity to sell the business or do a joint venture. This is why you got to have that document ready to add a new partner or LLC member to your business. Or when a partner leaves, you will need the valuation to determine the buying or buyout price, which is what we're talking about here today. We want to dissolve the, the we want to dissolve the company. We want we are preparing a dissolution plan. So if you have a business valuation report ready, that's pretty cool. You may be thinking about leaving the business. Getting getting a business valuation is one of the first step in creating your exit strategy. To expand your business with a loan or new equity, you'll need a business valuation done. When a business disaster happens, let's say you know the company is filing for bankruptcy for example it's too late to do a valuation but having a pre-disaster valuation helps with insurance and getting back on track personal life changes like a divorce can also trigger the need for a business valuation now let's talk about using a business appraiser to value your business because I've, I've told you why you need to have an updated business valuation report now let's talk about the experts who will conduct or perform that service an appraiser is usually an individual who estimates the value or worth of something an appraiser sets a value on a property or other assets including the asset of a business right now there are many kinds of appraisers many of whom specialize in various types of appraisal so an appraiser usually is an independent disinterested person who has specialized training and certification i want to i want to focus on the word disinterested you don't want someone to have any connection with your business or with a competitor so the person has to be unbiased disinterested and he or she must have specialized training and certifications and must use specific standards to value business property appraisers use financial analysis ratios such as the profit profit margin gross margin ratio they also use physical review and inspection and industry comparisons now what is the what kind of info do you need for to prepare a business valuation if you're selling if you are selling the business or you're dissolving the business for example there are there, there are some documents let's talk about them basic information includes a company history and description of the company as well as governing documents for example the bylaws information on employees benefits and pay and benefit plan cost the company financial statements including balance sheet income statements cash flow statements and owner's equity tax returns for the past three to five years detailed information about all company assets including intellectual properties and liabilities the current legal issues including any, any litigation or other disputes in the process now let's talk about i was talking to you earlier about intellectual property intellectual property is a type of intangible assets how do intangible assets work in a business valuation intangible assets are those assets without physical form they include as i said earlier intellectual property like patents trademarks and copyrights they also can include contracts and licenses, technology, and customer relationships. No business valuation should be undertaken without considering the value of the intangibles. How financial statements are adjusted for business valuation. Before a business valuation report is prepared, it is generally admissible. It, it is generally the norm that the company's financial statements are adjusted to remove discretionary items and one-time occurrences those those are called in accounting parallels extraordinary items and so that you once you remove those you can bring account to current market value all right folks this is really the end of today's conversation i was talking to you about partnership closure how a dissolution plan can greatly help 
and the recap here i talked to you about before you decide to close the doors do you have a partnership agreement what is the partnership type what type of partner is the person living can the partnership continue can the business be sold what is your ultimate goal for yourself and the partnership and how to create a dissolution plan and finally how to value the business and talk to you about business valuation all right i'll talk to you another time until then remember stay marvelous